Creepers. They're everywhere. <laughs> anyway, hey guys, how's it going? My name is RP, and welcome back to another episode of RP Plays Minecraft. Guys, we're back where we left off in the previous episode. And in this episode, we're going to start things off by gathering some materials to get a flint and steel to light up the portal. Because if you guys don't remember, a creeper blew up the portal to the nether here in the ice spikes biome. So we're kind of stuck here. Alright, which is not good. <laughs> so, yeah, again, we'll have to gather up some materials, I guess. And I would really prefer no creepers to blow up again. It was just nighttime. So there are a few mobs around here. So I might as well kill them. But yeah, before we begin, I do want to mention the previous episode that we had up of RP Place Minecraft. It was a blast to record it, and I really hope you guys enjoyed that, because I really, really enjoyed making that video. You know, it took around about 8 hours to produce that video. 8 hours, that is absolutely ridiculous. I have never in my entire life spent 8 hours on a YouTube video before. So I really hope you guys enjoyed that video. It took so long to make, and I really, really tried to make it as good as I possibly could. So yeah, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed that video, and hopefully my videos uh, in the future here are gonna be just as good as that one. You know, this almost feels like we have started on a brand new world. You know how when you start up a world, you chop down some trees, and then gather some wood? That's exactly what we gotta do here, because when we came here, we had no wood at all, and no stone or anything. So it kind of feels like we're starting from scratch, except uh, we're starting out with overpowered tools. <laughs> I guess that's the only thing that's ma that makes the difference. I have now gathered up plenty of wood, so what we gotta do now is find a cave and obtain some iron here. I have already got some, some coal. Uh, you can see I even have a coal ore because I brought my silk touch, of course, and I accidentally mined one of those with silk touch. But anyway... I think I'm gonna make a chest here for all uh, the unnecessary stuff that we're not gonna use uh, in this uh, section here. So let's chop that in there, and I'm gonna look for a cave. It looks like there might be one over there, perhaps. I have managed to find a cave, and it looks like there's some coal here, and hopefully there's some iron further down it. Nope, it surely doesn't seem like it. Darn it. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like there's another cave here. Hopefully, oh yeah, right there. Alright, cool. <laughs> that was quick, but that's only two pieces. Well, I guess we do actually only need uh, one piece for the flint and steel, so that's not too bad. But I think what I might do is actually explore this a little bit further. I hear a skeleton. Maybe he's on the surface, I don't know. But I think I'm going to explore this a little bit off camera. To see if there's any cool things down in here. Oh, that looks like a pretty good batch of ores. Nice. Is it just me? Or does this ice look very glitched? Oh my god, I thought they fixed this. In a patch. Apparently not. <laughs> that looks sketchy. So guys, I didn't really find anything that interesting worth showing you guys down the cave, but I did get a bunch of iron and some flint. But then I realized, how in the world are we going to convert the iron ore into iron ingots without a furnace? Yep, I completely forgot to get stone while I was down there. Now that I've gathered some stone, I do believe it is finally time to smelt some iron ore. And make the flint and steel. So we do have a stack of iron ore, which should be more than enough to make at least one flint and steel. Or perhaps 64. The 
sun is shining behind those big white square clouds and I do believe it is finally time we go ahead and craft that flint and steel. Boom, there we go. This is what's gonna get us out of here. <laughs> so, uh, by the way, if you're wondering why there are random holes uh, around here, it is not creeper blasts. It is actually me mining out the packed ice because apparently it seems like um, the ice spikes actually peek down underground a little bit. But anyway, I figured before we light up the portal and start our trip back home, I thought I would give you guys a quick look of the resources I've gathered here in this ice spikes biome. Uh, underground, we found a little bit of redstone and some gold, which is always nice. Of course, we got some wood, and then also we got a lot of packed ice and somewhat a lot of regular ice, which is always good. But I think it is finally about time we light up the portal here and start heading home. I am going to miss this place, I gotta be honest here. Well, I'm not so much gonna miss it because I am eventually gonna come down here uh, at some point when we run out of ice, which is probably not gonna be soon. But there we go, we lighted up the portal and I think about time we head home. I gotta admit, after being stranded there in the ice spikes biome, I kinda miss it a little bit. But, to be honest, it feels great to be home. Ah, oh, the fresh air, the warmth, it's not cold anymore, I don't freeze all the time. It is a nice and warm biome we're in. Ah, oh, that's great. I am really glad to be home, it feels great. But you know what, it feels kind of odd not having projects to draw from the project randomizer anymore. It feels really odd, it feels like there's something missing in my episodes now. It's really weird. Despite the fact we don't have any projects left to draw from the project randomizer, guys, we still have a lot of work on various bunch of things in our world, including the mop soda. And the reason we even came to the ice spikes biome in the first place was to get packed ice for the mop soda. So I figured why not go ahead and work a little bit more on the mop soda in this episode. I did in the previous episode explain a little bit about how the first part of the mop sorter works. Basically creepers and skeletons are a little bit shorter than zombies and witches, which means they can actually fit below these trapdoors here. So the idea is the zombies, creepers, skeletons and witches will fall down there. You can see the sign up there, there's a little hole. They will fall down through there, land in the water and the zombies and witches will not be able to fit underneath these trapdoors here, so they will come along here. But the so uh, but the creepers and the skeletons will fit underneath here and they will fall down there. So that is the first part of the sorting done. The next part is gonna be a little more tricky as we're actually gonna need a villager to sort out the zombies from the witches. You know, I almost regret building this skyscraper this small. <laughs> Because it is getting tight in here. This is where the spiders were supposed to fall down. But as you can see, there's something in the way here. So we might have to move that a little bit over here. So that's going to fall he down here somewhere. But yeah, it is getting tight. It's going to be hard to find space for all the sorting and stuff. But it's a fun challenge. Definitely a fun challenge. I like this. So I thought I would really quick give you a quick look of the next part of the sorting and that is the witches and the zombies so if we dump a few zombies and witches down here you can see that they should get sorted nice and easy as you can see the zombies goes over here and the witches goes over there and the reason that is is because we have a villager right here and for those of you who are not complete morons <laughs> you should know that zombies like to track down villagers so what happens here basically is when the zombies get to this point they kind of fight the stream and they go over here instead while witches are just like nah you know what never mind and they just follow this stream here this part is just about done the only thing we need now is the villager so getting hold of a villager is not really the problem what is the problem however is getting him up there 
which is going to be kind of difficult. I'm thinking we'll have to use rails and a minecart and stuff like that to get him up there. It shouldn't be that difficult, but it's going to take some time to lay out a minecart track all the way from a village to over here. Hmm. So I thought we were not going to do that for this episode. We did get a little bit of progress done on the mops order. Not a whole bunch, but you know what? Progress is progress, and I'm pretty happy about what we've gotten done today. So instead, I thought we were going to do something dedicated to the Project Randomizer, but before I tell you guys what that is, there's something I want to talk about real quick, and that is this thing down here. Now, I know I've showed you guys this before in, in some episodes, never really talked about it, but basically I just made a little hallway here leading down to this. And basically what this is, is at some point in future episodes, we're going to build a sorting slash storage system for, for all of our items. And this is going to be huge. We're going to have one double chest for each single possible obtainable item in survival Minecraft, if that makes any sense. Hopefully it did. <laughs> but, oh, this is going to be such a big pro project. I have designed a lot of the modules we're going to use for the automatic sorting and stuff uh, in creative. And I'm really excited to get this thing started. We're not going to start this thing uh, in, the f in the next couple of episodes, though. Uh, because I am lacking resources <laughs> for this thing. It's going to require a lot of resources. So in future episodes, we're going to work on that. What we are going to be working on today is something dedicated to the Project Randomizer, as I just mentioned. And what we're going to do is we're going to build a room dedicated to it, basically. So instead of having this right here looking weird and not really fitting in with the rest of the theme here, we're going to build a room with this thing in. But not only that, we're also going to build some sort of hall of fame with the uh, projects that we drew. And I'm going to go in depth with that a little bit later because I have a really sick idea of, uh, for that thing. But the first step is to tear this thing down. And there goes the redstone in there. So guys, you might be wondering, where are we going to have the room for the project randomizer. Well, I thought we've kind of had this hallway leading down to nothing for a very long time now. So I thought, why not give it a go and have the room for the project randomizer at the end of this hallway here. So I thought I would give you guys a quick progress update of where we are standing and what we have done so far. Now I haven't done a whole lot yet, but as you can see, I did mine out the room here for the project randomizer and I have actually also placed down the project randomizer as you can see right here. And I thought it was a really cool idea to change things up a little bit and have the project randomizer in the center of the room instead of inside the wall as we used to. But also I thought I would share another really cool idea that I had for this thing. Because not only are we just going to have the project randomizer here inside of this room, but also if you can imagine us having branches on all these three sections here we would have branches and then basically in these branches we would have builds miniature builds of each project that we have drawn from the project randomizer so basically if you can imagine we go in down here then we would probably have glass here and then behind that glass we would have say a miniature build of the mop farm that we did because that was a project that we drew from the project randomizer so I thought that was a really crazy idea. This might take a little long to make and design some the miniature versions of what we have already done so far, but I thought that was a really sick idea and I hope you guys are gonna like that. So I kinda have an idea here, okay? So instead of having branches here, I have seen this thing where you have a piston with a piece of string on top and when you walk over it, the piston is going to retract. Now, I have seen these things before and I know they work, but how they work, I'm not quite sure. I'm going to have to look a little more into this. But I thought it would be really cool if we have these kind of drops going down like that. And that's also going to like break up the room a little bit more. So it's going to be a lot less open if we have all these branches going down there. So basically, there wouldn't be a branch here. It would just be it would be blocked off, 
right? And then we would have the drop going down there, and that's where we would have all those miniature builds of the projects. So I thought that was a much better idea than having the branches. Just another quick progress update here. This is what the room looks like so far, and I must say, I'm actually pretty pleased with it. I mean, I have never really been a fan of mixing this many wood color types together. You can see there's some dark oak wood planks, birch, regular oak, and spruce around here. But I really like it. I don't know, there's just something about it that I really, really like. Uh, I am aware that this room does not at all fit the theme of the rest of the base here. But I thought it was nice to get some change going for once. Uh, around the base here so yeah pretty happy with uh, how it's looking so far and I'm gonna work a little bit further on it the room is now done and below this piston is where we'll have the first Hall of Fame for season one of Project Randomizer I doubt we'll do that for this episode though because that is gonna take quite a while and that's gonna be quite a big project actually so yeah, I'm just bringing that up because we might work on that in the near future. But anyway, this is what the room looks like. It is all done, and I am really, really liking it. I gotta be honest, I didn't think this would work out too well when I first started building it, but I am really glad with how it turned out. It definitely worked out really, really good. So yeah, I want to hear what you guys think about it. Uh, I would love to hear your guys' opinions, as always. But anyway, that is probably what we're going to do for this project in this episode. The next thing we're going to work on in today's episode, and probably the last thing, is the spider farm. We never really finished it, and I think it is finally about time that we do that. I am now here at the spider farm, and this is the project that never really worked out quite as I wanted it to. We built this weird thing here that should stop the spiders from climbing back up when they land it down here so if we press this button you can see that it does that but this never really worked out quite as I wanted to because as you can see there's a gap here the spiders would just be able to walk uh, back to the redstone here as you can see right there that's a great example if we press the button again it will release or it will retract uh, so the new spiders could fall down here but if we actually go ahead and take a look inside the spawner room you can see there is also some, so, also some weird stuff happening here. The spiders can actually land down here, and since spiders are only... Oops, ah, oh, god dang it. I hate landing down here. Since spiders are only one block tall, they would actually be able to just chill right here underneath the water and right above the slime blocks here. And... Yeah, <laughs> as I mentioned, it never really worked out quite as I wanted to. But I have one last idea of... Uh, something we can do for this thing. I have now completely emptied the room for all the shenanigans we had going on in here and I think this might be a good time for me to explain what I had in mind for the final idea uh, of this spider spawner here. Now actually I might want to get an infinite water sauce uh, in place real quick just so it would be way easier to work with. There we go. All right, so the f idea I had in mind was a mob elevator. So instead of having the water stream uh, we had before right here going down here, we would have the water stream right here going down here. So basically, if you can imagine uh, the water flowing from here to here, and then the spiders would land down in this water stream, and this water stream would take the spiders to a mob elevator that would have the spiders travel up, 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 up to, I don't know which elevation we would have it at, but pretty high up, at least 20 to 30 blocks up. And then there would be another water stream traveling the spiders somewhere over here, and then there would be a huge drop down here, and that would automatically kill the spiders. So I think that is a really cool idea for complete automation of this thing and also something I mentioned when we started building the spider spawner is this is not meant for to be an XP farm so it wouldn't really uh, I wouldn't really mind them dying automatically so we don't get their XP because there are plenty of other good ways to get XP uh, than from spiders so yeah that is my idea and I am going to get to work on that 
I have now finished almost everything that I wanted on the spider farm here. The spiders will fall from a major drop and land on top of these pressure plates. They will of course die and then their drops will go through the pressure plates. Oh, not pressure plates. Did I say pressure plates? Half slabs. I meant half slabs. Of course. They'll go through the half slabs down into the hoppers and they will eventually land uh, down these chests. You guys know the drill. For those of you who have seen the first episode we started building this uh, spider farm in, you'll know how all this stuff works here. But anyway, let's take a look upside, uh, not upside down, <laughs> upstairs, of course. And the first change you might notice is the glass here. So we actually have a nice view down to the to the end of the drop. Uh, we probably can't see up here. We can see a little bit, but yeah, as you can see, there's a far, there's a far way down from all the way up here. I'll show you up there in a little bit. But yeah, this is what the room looks like so far. This is the spider. It's all cobblestone uh, walls and stuff, uh, which we are going to change in a little bit because there's actually one more thing that I wanted to do on the spider farm before I can call it completely done. But yeah, there's another wall right here where we can look down to the drop area. So yeah, uh, let's go outside, outside the cave here. That should be right up there and it's nighttime. So yeah, this is what the mob elevator thing looks like from outside. Uh, the spiders will go up this elevator here, and it will follow the water stream, and then they'll drop down here. But the very last thing that I wanted to do with this project here is I wanted to kind of customize this room here and make it look like uh, a what a real spawner room would look like, you know, with the moss, mossy cobblestone and stuff like that. We might get a couple of light in here, just to prevent the spiders from spawning. But yeah, not only that, uh, do, I do not have any moss stone stairs, uh, but I do have some regular stairs. But yeah, make them look like kind of, um, make this room look kind of like a, a, what a regular spawner room would look like, but with a few changes, like with stairs and walls, so the walls look a little broken up and stuff. Oh, this water stream is a little bit annoying. Might need to get rid of that. But yeah, if you can imagine that, that's kind of what I want to do. It just came to my attention that apparently there is no such thing as moss stone stairs. How odd. This is what the room looks like now, and yeah, I kind of like it. It looks pretty cool. I really like the effect, the whole, the stairs and the moss stone ads. That it looks kind of broken and stuff like a broken spawner room Yeah, I really like it. So yeah, you can see I even went ahead and did it down here and stuff I went ahead and did it all over the room and I really like it. So let's go ahead and remove the torches And as you can see if we head downstairs real quick, I even went all in I went all in and did it down here even and as you can see I actually removed a little bit of the uh, ceiling here so you can see up here a little bit more and you can get a little glimpse of the spawner there which I thought was a pretty cool effect so yeah this would be the spider room done I think but guys that is gonna do it for this episode hopefully you guys have enjoyed it as always I put a lot of effort into making these videos so hopefully you guys enjoyed it if you did leaving a like on it would be very much appreciated and if you guys want to see more of my videos, subscribing is also super duper much appreciated. But yeah, other than that, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next episode. See ya!